Hello everyone, welcome to my course Introduction to Market Structures. We have completed the Kurno model, we have done both Kurno duopoly market, Kurno uh, oligopoly market. In Kurno competition, what we have seen that the firms decide the output and the aggregate based and based on the aggregate output the market price is determined okay and while deciding the output they play a strategic game today we are going to do butra competition butra competition in butra competition what happens instead of quantity they will choose price so how now let us specify the market so, if for simplicity, we will assume that there are two farms. So, it is a duopoly market. Okay. Next, both farms produces homogeneous product. What do we mean by homogeneous product? Homogeneous product means that whether I buy from farm 1 or buy from farm 2 by paying the same price, it does not matter. The type of good or the nature of the good is going to be same. So, they are perfectly substitutable. Okay. So, market demand is this, it is same as what we have considered in the Kurno. Yeah. So, this P is the market price, we will come to this, but now in a market we know there is only one price and it is this price and this is the aggregate quantity demanded at that price. Okay. Again for simplicity, we assume that the we will see in this uh, butter competition, we will take different types of cost. So, first both the firms are similar in terms of cost function. So, cost of farm 1 is C into Q1, Q1 is the output of farm 1 and cost func function of farm 2 is C into Q2. So, this is a CRS technology constant returns to scale and there is no fixed cost okay? and both the firms are same. So, here marginal cost of farm 1 is C, marginal cost of farm 2 is again C. Okay? So, they are same. Now, let us specify the game, the strategic interaction in this. So, farm 1 chooses a price that is P1 and farm 2 chooses a price P2. Okay? Now, here just previously I have said that the in market there is only one price. So, the market price is actually the minimum of these two price. Okay? So, <coughs> okay. so, strategy set of firm 1 is this P1 and which lies between 0 to infinity and strategy set of firm 2 is again this which lies between 0 to infinity. Okay? And both firm, both the firms choose price simultaneously and only once. So, this is a static game of static game which is played simultaneously. Okay? Next, farm 1 knows the payoff of farm 2 for all the combinations of price P1 and P2. Farm 2 knows all the payoffs of payoffs for all the combinations of P1 and P2 of farm 1. So, therefore, it is a complete information static game okay? and it is played only once. Now, we specify some further details okay? like buyers, they will buy from the firm that is charging the lower prices. So, if we have two price P1 and P2 and if P1 is less than P2, then everyone is going to buy from P farm 1. And if P1 is greater than P2, then everyone is going to buy from farm 2. Okay? So, this will change the demand curve faced by each farm. Okay? We will come to it. And further, if farm 1 sets a price P1 and suppose P1 is less than P2, then there must be a demand and that demand is going to be this, this much. So, this demand has to be satisfied by farm 1 whatever be the quantity. Okay? So, this firm has to supply this much amount of quantity. Okay? So, based on these two assumptions, we specify the demand curve of farm 1. So, farm 1 if suppose sets a price P1 and it is less than P2, then it has to 
serve the whole market and at P1 market demand is A minus P1. So, this whole amount is to be satisfied or is to be supplied by firm 1. So, demand curve of firm 1 is this and if firm 1's price is same as the price of firm 2, P1 is equal to price P2, then the market is equally shared, it is this. So, the at this, this is the amount of quantity demanded and this is the demand faced by firm 1. Similarly, firm 2 will face this if the prices are same. And if price of set by firm 1, P1 is greater than P2, then the amount is 0. It does not, nobody buys from that firm. Okay? So, based on this demand function, we will get the payoff function. So, the payoff of firm 1, if price of firm 1 is less than the price of firm 2, then it has to serve the whole market. So, the demand is this much, so demand into price, so this is the total revenue and this is the marginal cost C into the amount it is going to produce A minus P1, so this, so this is the total cost. So, this is total revenue minus total cost, so this is the profit. So, profit of firm 1 when it sets a price P1 and firm 2 sets a price P2 and suppose P1 is less than P2, it is this and suppose price are such that P1 is equal to P2, then the profit is this because this is the total revenue minus total cost divided by 2 because the this is going to be shared half, this is again going to be shared half. So, this is the payoff. So, this is the payoff function of firm 1. Similarly, payoff demand function of firm 2 is A minus P2 if P2 is less than P1. That is, if firm 2 sets a price less than the price of firm 1, it has to serve the whole market and the demand at P2 is this. And if it sets a price which is same as the price set by firm 1, P1 that is P1 is equal to P2, then the market is shared equally. So, the demand is this one. And if firm 2 sets a price which is greater than the price of firm 1, then it gets zero demand that is nobody buys from it. So, its demand is zero. So, from here, from this demand function, we get the payoff of firm 2 payoff of firm 2 is this. So, this is the demand that the firm 1, firm 2 faces when its price is less than the price of firm 1. So, demand into price. So, this is total revenue, marginal cost and it is same as the average cost. So, this is into the amount it has produced. So, total cost. So, this is the profit. And when prices are same, P1 is equal to P2, then this is A minus P2 into P2 divided by 2, again C into A minus P2 divided by P2, this is the total cost and this is the total revenue, so the profit is this. So, it is simply half of this if the prices are same, but if they match and if in one case it does not match okay? and profit is 0 if price is of firm 2 is more than the price of firm. Now, given this specification, we have to find the pure strategy Nash equilibrium on this scheme. Okay? So, first I will show you algebraically and then we will do it geometrically, it is through diagram and through diagram it will become more clear. Suppose, firm 1 sets a price P1 okay? and P1 is suppose less than P2, already there is a P2. Given P2, okay? right? So, the profit of and suppose this is equal to is A minus P 
P minus. This is the profit. And profit of farm 2 is 0. So, farm 2, if it sets a price, P2 is equal to this, P1 is equal to P, then the profit of farm 2 is it is this right and instead if farm 2 sets a price which is p2 suppose is equal to p minus some epsilon m which is this then the profit of farm 2 is It is this right. Now, if we compare this profit and this profit, we see that this is C, right. So, we have we can get this, and then if we solve this we okay uh, we have got this this can be written this way this part is multiplied with this part and then we are left with E P this. Okay? So, if farm 1 sets a price P 1 and farm 2 sets a price uh, epsilon less than that price, then the profit of farm 2 is going to be this. Now, if this epsilon is very small, if it is very small, then this part we can show that this um, which is this is actually greater than when form 1 sets this and it shared the market. So, when the farm 1, farm 2 set the price same as the price of farm 2 and the share the market equally because from here we get that So, if epsilon is sufficiently small, we can construct an epsilon like this, which is which satisfies this. So, if this is because then actually we get a quadratic form and this quadratic form is of this nature that is um, so I have taken it in this form. this so we can have a epsilon which satisfies this and this will give us that since there exists an epsilon so we will it is optimal for farm 2 to 
reduce the price or um, undercut the price if firm 1 sets the price p then the firm 2 will set a price p minus epsilon. So, like this it will go on because we have taken this price to be some arbitrary price. So, like this this will continue and then finally, we will get that the price is equal to c and when the price is equal to c, so profit of firm 1 is 0 because it is a minus c if firm 1 says this price and and this is will also be equal to 0 if it shares the market at that price and profit of firm 2 it is going to be the same and it is going to be shares and it is going to be so this is equal to 0 this is equal to 0 so price of firm 1 and firm 2 is going to be such that it is going to be equal to marginal cost and in this case we have only one pure strategy nash equilibrium so nash equilibrium is p1 is equal to p2 is equal to c which is equal to marginal cost we get this so when the cost function are same and the marginal uh, cost function are such that the marginal cost is constant and they do not have any fixed cost in that case in butter competition or when the firm set the price or compete in terms of price we get that the uh, pure strategy Nash equilibrium is to set the price is equal to marginal cost and this will lead to that the profit of firm 1 and profit of firm 2 is 0 at Nash equilibrium. So, this is called something called a Butra paradox and why it is a paradox because there are only two firms and two firms are sufficient to generate zero profit. Generate zero profit here means that the lead the price through the price competition the price is reduced to marginal cost and when the price is equal to marginal cost the firms are not earning any supernormal profit. So, they are earning same as what they get in a competitive market, but in competitive market we need many firms, but here with only two firms we can generate this outcome. So, that is why it is called a butter paradox. Now, let us do it diagrammatically. So, profit function we can write it in this way if suppose p is equal to if it is this. Now, if we try to plot this function In this axis we take price and here we take profit. If we take this, let us this is C and this is A. Okay? At P is equal to C, profit is equal to 0. At P is equal to A, profit is equal to 0. Yeah? And if when we differentiate with respect to A, we get A minus A this. So, this is slope is increasing as long as p is less than this and this is this this right. So, it is maximum at price is equal to a minus c divided by 2. So, we get this curve something like this. So, this is the profit right. 
Now, if we take this So, again here when p is equal to c profit is equal to 0 and p is equal to a profit is equal to 0 and this is same as this curve only it is at the half distance. So, this point is the you can say the monopoly price. This curve okay, half the market share. Now, so we get the function the plot of the payoff function in this form. Okay. Now, let us look here. And since the payoff functions are same, so suppose this is for farm 2, because if you look at the payoff function, it is same, right? the same. Now, this is now set a price like this. So, this is suppose P, P is equal to farm 1 sets a price P. If farm 2 sets a price slightly less than this that is P 2 is P minus epsilon something close to here. Its market share is this, but if it is sets a price which is p2 is equal to p then it is here both the firm gets here so firm 2 is going to set this price and moment it sets this price its payoffs is from here to here right so it is like this now if firm 2 sets this price now firm 1 is going to set a price which is p slightly less than this slightly less than here so, if it sits here, its market is this. Now, farm 2 will know that if it sits a slightly less than this, then if it sets the same PA, it will get this profit, but if it's like it is still higher. So, P2 is going to be this like this it will go on. So, this undercutting will go on till this point, because for any price which is greater than A, this curve lies below this curve. So, there is the moment you undercut the price, you get a bigger market share and your profit is also higher. So, that is why price is should be always equal to this that is equal to marginal cost. So, let uh, the reaction functions of form 1 and form 2 in this can be represented in this form. Suppose, this is the 45 degree line and this is the marginal cost. So, marginal cost are constant and it is same. Now, if farm 1 set a price, suppose it is this, farm 2 will set a price which is less than this. We have seen this from here, from this diagram. So, any price of farm 2 greater than this, so how it is going to respond, what it is here. So, it will be less than A. So, it will be lying here slightly less than and when it is C, it will be C. So, this is you can say C 
and then this. And if firm price of firm 1 goes below this, it is not going to uh, reduce the price. So, it is this. So, this is the reaction function of firm 2. And the reaction function of firm 1 we will get in this way. Firm 2, if it charges a price like this, it will set the price such that it will be slightly less than the price of firm 2. From this diagram, we know this. So, it will be like this. So, it will above lie above the 45 degree line and at price when firm 2 sets the price C, it is going to set the price C like this and if it moves below this, it will not charge any price below this. So, it will be like this. So, this green line is the reaction function of reaction function of form 1 and these two reaction function intersects at this point. So, that is why this is the Nash equilibrium point. Okay. So, we get this as the outcome based on this reaction function. Another case is suppose we now take different function, different cost function. So, what do we take? We take the cost function of form 1 to be this. Okay. So, it is C 1 Q 1. Cost function of form 2 is C 2 Q 2. Q 2 is the output, here C 1 is the output and further we assume C 1 is less than C 2. So, this means that form 1 is more efficient than form 2 and there is no fixed cost and there is C R S. Okay. So, this is the specification of the cost. So, we know that farm 1 can produce output at a much lower cost than the farm 2 and because of this thing and they do not have any fixed cost. All the cost is only the variable cost and the demand curve function is same as earlier. So, farm 1 if it sets a price lower than the price of farm 2, it gets the whole demand this if it says the price same as the price of form 2, it has to share the market equally and if it sets a price higher than the form 2, it gets 0 demand. Okay. Similarly, for form 2, if it sets a price less than the price of form 1, then it gets the whole market demand. If it sets a price which is same as the price of form 1, then it gets or it has to share the market equally and it gets 0 demand if the price is higher than the price of farm 2, okay, farm 1. Now, given this, we know the payoff function of farm 1 is going to be like this. Here, instead of C earlier, it is going to be C 1 and here it is be C 1. Here, in this case, farm 1 is getting the whole market. In this case, the farm 1 is getting half of the market or half of the total quantity demanded at that price. Okay. And for farm 2 at P 2, when P 2 is less than P 1, it is getting the whole market that is at P 2, whatever is being demanded, it farm 2 is serving or selling. It is getting this payoff. This is the quantity and this is the price. So, this is the revenue, this is the total cost. So, this is total revenue minus total cost gives you the total, it gives you the profit. And if the price is same as the price set by farm 1, then it shares the market equally and profit is this. Okay. Now, let us solve this and in this case, we will do it through diagram. Okay. So, first let us look at the profit function of farm 1. Farm 1 profit function is 
this right if p 1 is less than p 2 and this if p 1 is equal to p 2 right. So, I plug here c 1 it is 0 at p is equal to c 1 profit is 0 0 p is equal to a profit is 0 half of this is also going because this is simply half of this. this if we differentiate it with respect to p 1 we get it first order condition. So, this gives if So, this is the optimum point. If p 1 is less than this, then it is increasing. If p 1 is greater than this, then it is decreasing. So, it is something like this. So, this is the and if market is shared is if you have got half of the market, then this this is for form 1. Okay. Now, here for form 2 it is this right. So, it is same except at p 2 is equal to c 2 profit is 0 and p 2 is equal to a c 2 is 0 and if we differentiate we get it to be if p 2 is equal to a minus c 2 yes. and from here we know since we are given that c 1 is less than c 2. So, a minus c 1 divided by 2. this is greater than a minus c 2. So, this curve is going to be somewhere some So, this is the profit of form 2 and this curve is the half of profit ok and this point is a minus c 2 yes and this point is c 2. So, now I hope uh, this um, payoff functions the diagram of the payoff function is clear. Now, we will derive the Nash equilibrium here ok. So, you will see that we may not have Nash equilibrium in this. Hmm? Both are present. Okay.
ok a minus c 2 divided by 2 plus and this is c 2. Now, suppose form 1 sets a price somewhere here this price this is p 1 equal to p this. If form 2 sets a price which is same as this it is going to get this as a profit and form 1 is going to get this as a profit. Now, but form 2 if it sets a price slightly less its profit is going to be here. So, form 2 is going to set this price. So, we get this. Now, if form 1 sets the price same as this its profit is going to be here, but if it sets a price slightly less than this. So, if p 1 is this then it moves profit to here. So, it is going to be like this. So, we see that there is a tendency to undercut. and it will go on. So, it will reach like this. So, suppose p 1 is equal to c 2, farm 2 sets a price, farm 1 set a price which is equal to c 2. Okay? If it is here, then farm 1, see farm 1 has said this, farm 2 if it sets a price farm 2 wait let us. So, like this it is going on and suppose farm, farm 2 sets a price p 2 is equal to c 2. As it is going goes on decreasing it reaches a price c 2 and suppose farm 2 that is p 2 is equal to c 2. Then if farm 1 matches this price then its profit is going to be here. But if it sets a price slightly less than this, its profit is going to be here, right? So, P1 is C2. The moment it sets this price, farm 1, farm 2 is not going to set any price because if it sets a price less than this, if if P 2 is less than C 2, its profit is going to be negative. So, it will set the price is going to be like this only. Now, here see instead of this price, if form 1 had set a price which is P 1 C 2 this half of this profit here is going to be greater than when it is this because as the price increases profit increases because it is less than this price. This is the monopoly price or the price at which this we have derived it now this is maximum. So, farm 1 is going to increase again further if profit is this and and greater than 2 profit is going to be greater epsilon. like this and will go on increasing. So, profit of 1 is going to go on increasing. So, finally, it will hit p 1 is equal to c 2 because epsilon 2 tends to 0 as n tends to infinity. right? So, and when the moment p 1 is equal to this c 2, farm 2 sets a price which is also C 2, its profit is going to be here. So, it was like it was going like this. So, it was going increasing like this, then moment it hits it, it comes from here to here. 
So, again when it is here, so at P 1 is equal to C 2 is this which is C. So, this is less than epsilon which is this amount here. So, like this it will continue. So, we see that form 1 will undercut and then it will go on increasing till the price is C 2 and moment it reaches C 2 it will again undercut and then it will go on increasing till it reaches C 2. So, we see that there is no pure strategy because when it is farm 2 uh, price is C 2 optimal response of farm 1 is to set a price which is slightly less than C C 2. Now, when it sets a price which is slightly less than C 2 that is epsilon less than C 2 then it is better off by again taking half of that A. If we take this C 2, but then if we take this half of that distance this is epsilon then it is better off. Again it is further better off if we reduce that distance further. So, it will continue like this and as this portion is going on reducing and reducing it will hit the price will hit C 2. The moment price again hits C 2 profit goes down. So, goes down to this level. So, market is shared equally. Although farm 2 is earning 0 profit, but it is market is shared equally. So, that is why farm 1 will again reduce the price by some epsilon. Now, if you keep on reducing that epsilon your profit is again going on increasing. So, you will go on reducing the epsilon and finally, again hit C 2. So, this process will go on and so there is no pure strategy Nash equilibrium. So, no pure strategy Nash equilibrium in this situation. So, the moment we have a, a CRS production function and so our cost function is like this, but they are different. If suppose one of the farm is efficient, another farm is relatively less efficient than then. So, in a butter competition, we do not have any pure strategy in as equilibrium. Okay. So, it is based on this diagram. Now, let us introduce fixed cost. Okay. So, cost demand specification remains the same as earlier and the cost function it is also same, but there is a fixed cost component and it is this f. So, we have a component like this and we have a component like this here. So, this is the payoff of farm 1 and this is the payoff of farm 2. Now, again we explain it find the pure strategy whether we have a pure strategy in as equilibrium or not through the diagrams. Okay. So, it is this right. Now, here you will see that C is same, okay. but profit is 0 if it is at P 1 is equal to C profit is this portion is 0. So, profit is minus F. So, we have a price which is P is equal to P is equal to lower bar at which P 1 is equal to 0. Okay. The moment and P bar is greater than C marginal cost. Okay. And further at P 1 is equal to A, this profit is, this function is 0. This function is again, this is 0. So, this is 0. So, we will have negative A. So, we will have p is equal to some upper bar at which this is equal to 0. 
and if we differentiate this again we get the same thing that is first order conditions this is this. So, if we plot p here profit here this is p lower bar and this is p sorry and this is p upper bar and Okay. Earlier it was so this was C and this was A when fixed cost was not there, cost profit function was like this as a function of P. But now when we have a fixed cons fixed cost, so it has become something like this. Okay. So remember this. Thing. And this this thing, right? So this will be again further lower, lower. It will be something like this this portion, but rest it is this is going to be the maximum point. So, this is suppose P dash and this is suppose P double dash. This is P dash, this is P double dash. Okay. So, what we have now it is like this. this is p upper bar at p upper bar it is 0. This is p lower bar at p lower bar 0. This is equal to a minus p p minus c f. Okay. Now, we have again at p dash suppose we take the when the market is shared between is this so when we earlier this point where they are equal there it is it was same this point but here it is not like this because at p upper bar at p upper bar this is equal to this, but there is now half it is. So, it has to be lower than P A. So, so that if it is lower, this will take a higher value. So, overall it is. So, that is why it should be at P double dash, this is equal to 0 and P double dash is less than P upper bar. Similarly, earlier again when we take this at this, this is equal to 0 and this p dash is greater than this p dash is greater than p lower bar. Why? Because when we what is happening this price is less than so the maximum for this and this it is same and it is a minus c divided by 2 now since this a p lower bar is less than this so as we increase the pre here profit increases right it is same in this case also so at this price only it will make profit here it will make. so it will be something like this so this is the profit 
this is when it is say r equal to. Now, these two payoff functions are same for both the forms, right. Now, we have to find the pure strategy Nash equilibrium in this game. I hope it is clear how we have got this here, okay. This is p double dash and this is p dash, this is p lower bar, this is p upper bar, okay. How do we, we get the Nash equilibrium here? Suppose form 1 sets a price which is this, form 1 p 1 is equal to p. Now, if form 2 sets the same, its profit both form is going to get this, but if it sets a price which is this silent, it will get here. So, this is the best response. So, so, like this there is a tendency to undercut and finally, price will be here. Now, see if farm 1 has suppose reached this price, suppose P 1 is equal to P dash. Now, if farm 2 sets the same price, if P 2 is equal to P dash, then profit of farm 2 is also 0, it is this. But if instead, if it sets a price which is P2 is F, then what is happening? P2 is less than P1. So, it shifts to this level which is positive. So, at this is positive. So, Farm 2 will not set P2 is equal to P dash, but it will slightly reduce it. So, if it reduces, then it is getting some positive amount. So, it will like this. So, farm 2 will again reduce. So, farm 1 is going to like this, right. So, farm 2 is going to go like this, it will continue reducing the prices. So, it will finally reach this point. Okay. So, at this point, at this point, what is happening? So, it will go on. So, finally, suppose p 1 is equal to p lower bar. Now, at this if farm 2 sets p is equal to lower bar, then this in this a it is negative right. So, both the farm p 1 and p 2 both are getting negative right ok. So, farm 2 will not set a price like this. So, farm 2 is going to set is not going to set a price which is in this case below p dash because what is happening if you reduce go on you will continue, but moment you are here if it hits then you get a negative. So, here if you want to share the market, it is better to share here, right. Now, what is going to happen? Farm 1, since farm 2 is not reducing the price anymore because it is, it is less here. But if farm 2, farm 1 sets a price slightly higher than this A, it will, farm 2 will set a price less than it. And then again it will go here, moment it is here, farm 1, farm 1 is suppose, suppose farm 1 price is at P lower bar, okay. And farm 2 is still it is at some price which is this minus some epsilon, okay. Now, here instead if farm 1 is slightly go on increasing, but less than this, then 
what is happening? Its profit is increasing because you look at this graph as it moves here, its profit increases. So, suppose fund 2 stops here. So, it will increase like this. Moment it sets a price higher than this, then moment it sets a price which is suppose this plus small amount some epsilon, then best response for form 2 is to set something like this slightly less than this. So, again form 1 will reduce and then they will go on doing that and it will reach this price and then the other firm is not going to reduce any further. So, it will stop at some price like this, then firm 1 is again going to go on increasing, it will the moment it increases more than P, bar, P uh, lower bar, then firm 2 is going to react and it is going. So, in this case also we have no pure strategy, pure strategy Nash equilibrium. So, the, if we introduce fixed cost in Butler competition with CRS production function or CRS cost function, then we do not have any pure strategy in asset. So, what do we get? So, in Butler competition where the firm set prices, if the marginal cost are same and it is constant that is CRS and there is no fixed cost, then we have a pure strategy in as equilibrium and it is such that the prices are equal to marginal cost. So, they do not make any profit. So, and this is called the Butner paradox. Now, if the marginal costs are constant and but they are different. So, one firm is more efficient than the other firm. So, we have shown that in that case also if market is shared equally when the prices are same, in that case we do not have any pure strategy. Nash equilibrium and it was given here. Next, we keep the uh, marginal cost same and constant and also we introduce fixed cost. So, in this case also we see that there is no pure strategy Nash equilibrium in the market. Okay? So, with this uh, we end this portion of Butler competition and you can read it from this portion from search and where you can read from these pages and from industrial organization theory and application by Osai you can read section 6.3. Thank you.